Hello there, YouTube. It's your boy B3. Back with another kicking, you guessed it, action figure review. Today we are looking at the NECA Ultimate King Kong Concrete Jungle figure. Mm-hmm. This was NECA's fourth King Kong. They made just kind of a basic 33 King Kong and then a poster version repaint. And then they released him again uh, as the Skull Island Kong that we reviewed recently. And then we have this Concrete Jungle Kong. Now, after this, I will have reviewed all four, uh, and I will give you my thoughts uh, <clears throat> about all the releases kind of at the end, but I have done individual, more specific reviews of all four now, so check those out if you wish. But yeah, this guy, you know, from the neck down, he's pretty much the same Kong as all the others. Uh, the paint is a little different, like he's a different kind of brown and stuff. He's a bit, a bit more glossy looking than some of the others. Uh, and he has more accessories in the first two releases and whatnot. And the last two releases have different heads than the first two. And one of the heads has an extra articulation joint. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you articulation. You have up and down on the head. You know, you can look side to side. You can turn like that. You know, <clears throat> on this head only he has jaw articulation. The other head does not have it. You have up and down, forward and back on his little armies, you know, biceps swivel here. You have a double elbow bend and there's a swivel uh, on each of those joints as well. You got forward and back on the wrists. I just took this guy out of package so he's a little stiff. <laughs> uh, you get rotation, you know, nice ab movement. I like the rubber cover here, which helps with the legs forward, back. Could go back a little further, but it's fine. In and out, not really any rotation up there. But you do have a double knee bend, and there is a rotation on the top and bottom of that joint. Up and down on his little feet. Ankle pivot, and he does have peg holes uh, in case you have troubles making him stand. But all mine seem to stand pretty well once you line the legs up right. Ooh, these joints are ratchety. All right. So now let's get into... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, still gunky. Let's get into accessories. So he comes with two fist hands. All the releases come with two fist hands. And then he has two holding hands. Only the last two releases come with holding hands, but I really don't see a reason why they can't be put on the first two releases. They won't match up in color on the poster version, but and they won't super match up with color on the regular either, but I don't see why you can't put it on there. You know? Uh, he has this head. The eyes are actually sculpted incredibly well. <laughs> With this all painted up inside. So he has the articulated jaw head, but then he also has his angry boy head. And I will be displaying him with the angry boy head because my Skull Island one is displayed with this head right there. Now let's swap these. And I am going to display this guy with two fist hands. None of my others are. I mean, my regular one is displayed with one fist and one open. And then my poster version is one fist, one open, but the sides have swapped. And then my Skull Island is one holding, one open, I think. So this guy, I'm going to do two fist. <clears throat> and speaking of the open hands, he also comes with two open hands. Once again, all four releases come with these open hands. And they are sculpted. They're not just mirror images of each other. They are sculpted differently. I really appreciate that. I think that's good. And he also comes with his shackles, his broken shackles, because this is supposed to be Kong in New York, right? He comes with the broken shackles. They are both exactly the same, pretty much, except, and this is intentional. This one's not broken or anything. You see, this one has four links, and this one has three links. That's intentional so that they aren't symmetrical, just like the uh, open hands. I think that's really cool. Now, if you've seen my review of the Mezco, Skull Island Kong, which I did forever ago, uh, his, like, clasp open, and then you put them around and clasp them shut, but they didn't like to stay shut very well. These, you pop his hands off, slide them on, and then pop his hands back on. And I will be displaying him with these, because I don't really have any Kongs displayed with these. Uh, so I really need one displayed with these puppies. You know? And then we have his big accessory. 
the biplane. Very cool. I was told he came with a stand. I was told he came with a stand that's just the top of the Empire State Building. That did not uh, appear to be the case. Uh, I think I, I was just misinformed there. That's my bad. He does not come with that. But he does come with the biplane. So you get the little guys shooting. Uh, I'm not going to really talk about how they scale with him. <coughs> Excuse me. I do think they're a little small, but also Kong's scale changes multiple times intentionally in the 1933 film. They just change it to whatever they thought would look best in that scene. I can't fret them for that, as long as it's intentional. But the biplane is actually really, really nice. It does articulate right here. Very cool. Little guys doing a little bang bang, pow pow, skeet skeet. Fully painted. Very cool accessory for him to grab. <laughs> I really like it. I'm not going to display him with it though. I do have my pit crawler and pteranodon from the last release displayed, but I don't think I'll be displaying this one. It is cool though. This could go with a lot of different Kong figures. This would look good with my Mezco, you know? This might look good with, uh, like, the Monster Arts um, 2004 Kong, if you have that. This would look good with a lot of different Kongs. So, you know, it's a really cool accessory. I'm just not going to display him with it. But, you know, now let's get into detail and paint. If you look all over, you can see he's a bit more than just a gorilla. One, this posture isn't very, you know, gorilla. But he's also got all the scars. That's the one way that a lot of people just differentiate Kong and his face has I feel like more scars than the first two releases or at least they're more prominent you know actually speaking of here he is with the first release NECA King Kong and you can see there are slight paint differences and etc this King Kong has this screaming head you know there are some slight differences but they aren't like crazy but yeah, now let's move on into size comparisons. Now, a lot of you are probably used to collecting 6-inch kaiju figures. And this Kong isn't a 6-inch figure. He's kind of like a 7-ish, 8-inch figure. So he's not going to scale well with a lot of your traditional kaiju stuff. Like, here he is with the movie monster series Godzilla. Or, I guess, Godzilla Jr. from Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex. As you can see, he is too big for this Godzilla. He just is. And I know that the 1933 Kong would be, like, super-duper tiny next to Godzilla in actuality, but I'm just, like, that's not what I'm going by. I'm not going by literal heights and stuff. I'm just going by what looks like a proper matchup, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Ooh, sorry about my gunk. I really am. Uh, since I showed off that Godzilla, here he is with Gigan Rex himself. <clears throat> Ooh, God, I am <clears throat> gunky, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, still too big for the regular movie monster series, but here's a bit of a bigger movie monster series figure, haven't reviewed this guy yet, that's why his tag is still attached, here's the Godzilla store exclusive Varen, and I think he looks pretty damn good with the Godzilla store exclusive Varen, this guy is more 8 inchy. So I think that this is a proper matchup. I think this looks really good. So, you know, the 8-inch Bandai Japan stuff and, like, Band presto 8-inch stuff, that's fine. Now let's show him with an American Godzilla figure. Here he is with the Playmates Toho series uh, version 2 Shen Godzilla. It's close, but no cigar. So let's pull him back out. And now I want to show him with the Playmates Godzilla Terrestrial Strebrius. Now this is a smaller Godzilla, so I do think it works a bit better. Because, you know, this isn't Final Form. This isn't Ultima. If Ultima was at this height, I'd be like, no way, Jose. But, you know, next to last form? Yeah, that makes more sense to me. That looks good. Now I'm going to show him with a Diamond Select. Here he is with the Diamond Select Obsidian Fury from Pacific Rim Uprising. Uh, this could be okay. I mean, I'd rather him and Kong be the same height like this. 
But this is okay. I can understand people making Jaegers to be bigger than the Kaiju. Uh, that being, I know this Jaeger has a Kaiju's brain in it. You don't have to tell me. And if that's a spoiler for you, don't worry. I do not recommend Pacific Rim Uprising. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's not great. But since this is a Kong that often faces off against, like, dinosaurs and stuff, this is a Kong that fought the prehistoric. So, let's show him with something prehistoric. Now, this is a Safari LTD figure. It's not a dinosaur. It's actually a Cenozoic mammal. But... Uh, I actually normally won't show stuff in size comparisons until I've shown it in an action figure haul. I haven't even shown this guy in a haul yet. It is the Safari LTD Megacerops. Now, <clears throat> once again, this is not a proper scaling, you know? This isn't how big Megacerops would be compared to how big Kong is in the movie. But... I do think it looks cool, so I think a lot of these Safari LTD figures and stuff like this will look good with your Kong. I think he looks good. Uh, here he is with one I have reviewed, the Safari LTD Carcrodontosaurus. This one's not the best, but like, it's not the worst either. Carcrodontosaurus and... All these other theropods were of varying sizes, so maybe like the Safari LTD Feathered T-Rex or the Papo T-Rex would go excellent with this Kong. But you know, maybe use your own judgment, because the Safari stuff, the scale is everywhere and whatnot. They just want their stuff to be around the same size and not actually in scale with each other. But it's still pretty cool. So, one of my final thoughts, not only on the Concrete Jungle NECA Ultimate Kong, but the NECA Kongs in general. Uh, I think they really milked it, but without actually giving us what we should. Like, a couple Kongs would have been cool, or even Kongs from different films and comics and stuff, but the 1933 Kong, did we really need him four times? Like, if you're a big Kong fanatic like me, you grew up with Kong, and you've been obsessed with Kong every day of your life that you can remember, four ain't so bad. You know, especially when they're good, high-quality figures like these. But, like, the average collector, they're not going to want all four of these Kongs. They're just going to pick the best one, or whatever fits their collection the best, and go with that. If you like a more colorful figure, you might want the poster version Kong, you know? But if you don't want one that's that colorful, but you want the screaming one, then maybe you might go for the original release. Uh, if you want the chains and biplane, this is the one for you. If you want the little monsters and stuff that come with the Skull Island one, you know, it's got the two minifigs. Those are pretty cool, too. I have both of them out on display right now. You know? They didn't just go in the accessory box like uh, the biplane's gonna. Sorry, biplane. I... <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, if you're a casual kaiju or monster collector and stuff, and even if you love horror and love kaiju films, but King Kong isn't like a specific focus for you, you could probably just get one or two of these guys. If you're a big Kong fan, yeah, you'll probably enjoy all four just because they're Kong, you know? But you don't need all of them. It's not going to scale with your normal 6-inch kaiju stuff. It's going to have to go with bigger figures. It's not going to scale with the NECA Godzillas because they are the normal size. You're going to have to get, like, a Ben Presto or something. Sorry. But, I mean, he is a cool figure. I just wish NECA would have, like, made the Meat Eater, you know? Why didn't NECA, like, make the Pteranodon its own figure that's in proper scale instead of the minifigure? Because the minifigure is not the correct scale. It's way too small. The Pit Crawler, fine. That works as an accessory. Um... With a Pteranodon, I mean, that it, it's just a high-quality Pteranodon collectible. People would buy that. They bought that Amber Collection Pteranodon, you know? I'd buy a King Kong-branded one over the Amber Collection one any day. I, honest, I honestly would. But, I mean, why didn't they make, like, a 2004 Kong or uh, something? A Monsterverse Kong. And it's 
And I, the rights with King Kong are very weird. I actually do recommend looking into that if you don't know about it. It's kind of up in the air who even owns King Kong. So maybe they were only able to do the 33 Kong and weren't able to touch uh, the Peter Jackson or Monsterverse or 70s Kong, which I would still buy NECA figures of all of those, by the way. But even then, you know, you could have given us some critters. <laughs> there were critters from Skull Island. People would have bought the Beat Eater 100%. I really want one of those Willis O'Brien, you know, Ray Harry Housen tail dragon theropods, like a Guanji or something. Gimme, gimme. But that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Now, it's a good figure. I just don't know that it needed four separate releases, especially in the short time frame that they were all released. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll be seeing you all, you guessed it, next time. Bye for now.